It can restore you. It can renew you. It can revive you. Aren't you thankful for the Holy Ghost this morning? children they're still in lockdown for the two weeks and there's two more people that's been tested positive let's pray for Karen my daughter she's while she was here helping me with this crazy yard sale her knee gave way on her not the one she had operated on but I may have said this last Sunday but she's going to on the 17th of November, she's going to have the us, this knee, other knee replaced. And she's trying to lose weight. 
and she has lost some weight already, but just pray for her that God will help her get that weight off so she can be healthy and bless her that way because it's not easy to lose a lot of weight like that and in spite of what people think and pray for them. Somebody, maybe it's a family member, cousin, uncle, aunt, maybe it's your son or your daughter. Somebody that should be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. I want you, as we pray, I want you to call their name in faith. Amen. Ask God to reach for them this morning. Praise the Lord. He's not bound by these walls. Amen. He can touch, He can reach beyond this. Amen. As a matter of fact, the Bible says he can make a way where there seems to be no way. <clears throat> Amen. That's just our God. Amen. Right. Let's talk to him for a minute. Jesus. God, we need you this morning. Lord, love everything else we've got to have. We need your strength, God. We need your direction today, Jesus. Lord, I pray, God, that you would move in our lives. the spirit of the Almighty, Lord, controls the that you would touch every heart. I pray, Lord, that for every person that can hear the sound of my voice, that you would touch them today, God. Move, Lord, in their lives, Jesus. I pray, God, for healing today, my Lord, for direction, Jesus, for comfort, Lord. My God, I pray, Jesus, that you would give strength for this week. 
presence of the Lord this year. Amen. Praise the Lord. I can't help but get away from what I'm feeling in the Holy Ghost. I read an article, and this is going to seem a little bit depressing, and I don't really mean it that way, but I was reading just a couple of days ago, and it was talking about the church, and it says statistically that people that are raised in church, children that are raised in church, that only two out of ten actually stay in church for their lives, their entire lives. And they're, I got to thinking about that, how they, we, it's our responsibility to reach the lost. Yes. We are the ambassadors for Christ. Amen. He has placed on us that responsibility of sharing the gospel. Amen. And I thought about the 99. Amen. Evidently, 99% success rate is not okay with the Lord because He would leave that and go and search for that 1% that's not there. Amen. And if we're averaging only 20%, I think that's unacceptable to the Lord. Amen. And I want to be in a better place where I can do more and I can reach more. Amen. And we're we're at the end time, folks. It's not a time to sit back and take our ease in Zion. Amen. But we need to be about our Father's business. We need to be sharing the gospel. We need to be reaching for souls that are lost. Amen. Because Jesus is coming back. Amen. He's coming back for those that are making themselves ready. Amen. I want to be in that number. I want you to be there. I want your family to be there. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's going to take all of us. Amen. Amen. But we can do that. He's empowered us. We have the Holy Ghost. That's the reason that He gave that to us. Amen. It's the power to be a witness, the Bible says. Amen. Praise the Lord, and we need to be doing that. Praise God. What can walk away my sin? Nothing but the love of Jesus. Somebody has to live a lost soul know that.
time for us. I heard somebody mention something about a birthday. I don't know if that's today or when that is. Praise God. I feel 16 once again. And it's getting to where it's been a lot of times. I'm thankful to the Lord and all He's done for me. Yes. Uh, <laughs> what a mighty turnout of the Lord Wednesday night. Yes. I, the Lord, I, yes. I still just feel it. I still feel it. Right. Uh, it's, we just need that every night. Right. We just need that every night. Yeah, I'm so blessed, and the Lord takes care of me and my family. Thankful for this church and all the work that you fellows are doing. It's, it's certainly appreciated. Yes. And, uh, I once again wish I could give you help. He's a good God, amen. Praise the Lord. You went here on Wednesday night. All I can just say is that you miss the mighty move of God. Sometimes we get in our minds that, you know, Wednesday night we come for Bible study and that's all that's going to happen. But I think every now and then Jesus just says, let me just show you what I can do. Amen. I know you've got a plan and I know you've got an idea of how things are going to go, but let me just show you what will happen if you get out of the way and just let me do what I want to do. Amen. Brother Andrew can testify to that. Amen. Coming on a Wednesday night. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, so, I'll tell you what, it's that Wednesday night when I came, I was just about to place in the Holy Ghost. That was Praise the Lord. I didn't I didn't see it coming. Right. I mean, it, it, you know, like the truck. And yeah. next thing I knew, I was, I was speaking in tongues. And, yeah. and it was nothing that I ever experienced. And it, it made me realize that there's a chance to be part of something bigger than myself. And right. to walk with the Lord and to see the glory of God is something. Glory is the Lord. Yes. Yeah. Um, so lately, uh, I've been I'm working two jobs. I've got online classes and I've been praying, Lord, give me something. And say I put in my two weeks notice a month ago in my weekend job and uh didn't I'm a, like I told my boss I'll stay and take my airplane. I got sick Sunday with a cold, and that put me out of work for pretty much till Thursday, and then my boss found me a replacement, and so I didn't afford to be sick. And then that week, this past week, I got the chance to catch up on a lot of schoolwork, and it's just, it's, it's odd how it can give you some kind of answer, you know, like, it, it's like out of, like nothing you would expect right. out of thin air. Yes. Just you go, you keep praying, and I, and I just I'm trying to be more consistent by answering his right. calls when he calls upon me. Right. Because I just I feel it sometimes, yeah. and sometimes I ignore it. And I hate that. I hate that. So anyway, God will provide a solution. Yeah. Amen. 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 Sometimes it's still to this day, I've been in church for a long time, and sometimes it still just shocks me. Sometimes the way God answers, because it's not always what you expect. Amen. He doesn't do it the way that you expect or the way that you think he needs to do it. Amen. But what he does is always good, and it's always the way that it should be. Amen. We just have to walk by faith and trust him. Amen. Praise God. Amen. That's what happened this last Wednesday night. Amen. We came into the house of the Lord, 
Amen. Christian left different than what he came at. I'm sure that he came expecting a Bible study, but he went home with a whole lot more than that. Amen. Praise God. That's just how our God works. Amen. Sister Lee, are you going to sing for us? Would you mind coming on and doing that? Praise the Lord. Brother Rick, would you testify while she's getting ready to sing? Just give me that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was just thinking a couple thousand years ago, old Brother Matthew, I believe it was, made a statement that brings us up to date on where we are. He said, ever since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom suffered violent and the violent taken by force. Right. You know, the Lord walked into a synagogue once and he saw that it had went social. He saw that it had went to entertainment right. and to a money-making situation. Right. And he violently took over the synagogue that day. Yeah. And Ezekiel, I believe it was, said, if you come into the north gate, I'm not exactly sure which way this goes, but he said, go out the south gate. Right. right. Yes, go did. in the east gate, go out the west gate. Yeah. In other words, come into the sanctuary of the Lord and forevermore be changed right. and don't go out the same way you walk. When I was working in the inspection service, there was a, a Iowa Beef, I believe it was, big company, money-making business. But they, all these businesses have stocks that you can buy, sell. Right. And I, I'm not uh, against any of that, but Tyson Foods is a big company too. And they had their stock up for sale. And there's a situation in the uh, stock market called a hostile takeover. Right? <laughs> yeah. And if you're big enough and strong enough and got the power enough, you take it over. And it's right. called a hostile takeover. Right. And Tyson Foods just happened to step in and be big enough and strong enough and have the financial banking enough that they took over Iowa beef. Yeah. I'm telling you right now that the church, Pastor Dixon, the church has a unanimous yeah. power Praise the Lord. with God yes. that says we can take over whatever we want. Yeah. Praise yeah. the Lord. He said, Abraham, take off walking and yes. wherever the soles of your feet Right. Touch. Yes. Just go ahead and claim it because it's Lord. going to be yours. Amen. Sometime or another, we got to get this vibe. I'm not talking about physically just to right. going crazy. I'm talking about spiritually going crazy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. I'm talking about spiritually going into places that you've never been before because you can claim the things that you want with God. Hallelujah. And reach right. the point where you buy it. Amen. I am for a vibe with the church because when the church gets its place in God, the community yeah. is going to notice what we right. deserve. Right. Amen. Yeah. Get ready to do. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. That's exactly what I'm feeling when I was talking about those lost sheep. Amen. Praise the Lord. And, and sometimes we feel like that the devil's got the upper hand. But I want to tell you something. Your lost family, your lost loved ones, they belong to God. He has paid the price for their soul. It wasn't the devil. It wasn't the world that's trying to claim them. But Jesus paid the price. Amen. And I think we need to get violent in the spirit and start claiming those people to come back to the house of the Lord. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand.
goes along with whatever you're doing. Do y'all right, any of y'all right. ever do that? Yes, amen. It's, it's all of a sudden you're just singing part of an old gospel song that goes along with whatever you're doing, you know? Like, you know, you're working on the building. Right. <laughs> right. Things like that. <laughs> there's, a, there's something in here God's got for every situation. Right. And I'm sort of out of breath, but I'm better than I was last Sunday. Oh, yeah. And uh, I just love him so much. Thank you for asking. <laughs> there will be a happy meeting in heaven.
Jesus is going to come yes. and take us home. Amen. Oh, Let's stand together. I want to sing one more chorus where the Dixon's going to come yeah. and preach to us. And you may excited about what I feel in the house of the Lord. You are the only one.
Let all the earth fear the Lord. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes, For he spake and yes. it was done. Yes. He commanded and it stood fast. Yeah. And it's still standing. Thank yes. the Lord. Yes. Yes. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. Yes. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation yes. whose God is the Lord. Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. The people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. Yes. The Lord looketh from heaven. He beholdeth all the sons of men. Yes. From the place of his habitation. He looketh upon all the inhabitants of the earth. Yeah. He fashioneth their hearts alike. He considereth all their ways. Nothing escapes him. No, Not anything. He sees it all. He knows it all. There is no king saved by the multitude of an host. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. And horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is up on them that fear him, up on them that hope in his mercy. To deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Hallelujah. Yeah, to keep them alive, even in a yes. famine. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah, Praise God. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help yes. and our shield. Yes. For our heart shall rejoice in Him because we have trusted in His holy name. Yes. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according to as we hope in thee. Hallelujah. 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 The psalmist said that the counsel of the heathen cometh to naught. I just read that. It doesn't matter how big that council is. Go ahead. It doesn't matter how popular that council is. Oh, yes. It doesn't matter what has been contrived, what has put together, oh. what looks so good. Yes. The council of the haven cometh to naught. Right. And the devices of the people are of none effect. No weapon formed against thee yeah. shall ever prosper. Yeah. I wouldn't say that there would not be weapons that were formed. Right. It just simply said that they will have no effect. Yeah. Right. His name is yet this morning a strong tower. Yes, Chapter number 33, 
that there is hope in the Lord. Yes. And a nation that whose God is the Lord is a blessed nation. It sounds like the psalmist is convinced that there is hope, but that hope is not found anywhere else, only in Him. Right. Yes. Amen. Right. Not in strength, not in power, yes. not in riches, right. not in a multitude. No. It is only in Him, Amen. but it is to be had Amen. because He liveth and reigneth forever. One more verse of scripture. And this one you are well, well versed in. You're well aware of. As soon as I say what it is, you're already going to know. It is from Ecclesiastes chapter number 3. Yeah. And verse number 1, just one verse of scripture. To everything there is a season. And a time to every purpose under the heaven. Hallelujah. I'm going to preach for a while this morning, simply from this thought. I think it's time. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Could you worship Him one more time? We thank you, Jesus. We love you, God. We rejoice in you. We praise the God of our salvation. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We praise the God of our salvation. We give you honor and glory this morning. And bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord. The preacher, Solomon. The wise man, Solomon. Said that to everything, there is a season. For everything. A season is, of course, a particular time can be and is a time frame that is set aside for a particular purpose, a season. Right. Hallelujah. <coughs> On the farm, we planted by season. Yeah. There was a particular time set aside for that. There was a particular season. We didn't plant crops in October. It won't work that way. No. There may have been farmers that were around us that when it came to what thus saith the word of God, there may have been people that lived around us, our neighbors, that were rebellious or that chose to ignore what thus saith the word of the Lord. But as farmers, one thing they did not ignore, the seasons. Yeah, right. They understood the seasons. Sure. They knew that you don't plant this time of year. There was no farmer around us that said, well, that might be all right for some people, but I think I'm just going to plant in November and I'm going to reap in June. It does not work that way. And they understood that it would not work that way. Amen. So whether they realized it or not, they went by the seasons, the time frame that God had set forth and set aside right. for those particular purposes. Right. Right. The Bible declares that as long as the world stands, that cold and heat, seed time and harvest will not cease upon the face of the earth. Right. Amen. There are things that God set in motion that we are quite well versed in, familiar with in natural things. We know it works that way. We know it will not work any other way. But I'm here to preach this morning that there are things and there are seasons and there are purposes that are set aside in the spirit realm that God works within those To get with the program. Amen. God is moving among us. There was a time for Egypt or for Israel to come out of Egypt. 
There was a time for that. And when that time came, then the people began to pray. God moved and they were delivered. There was a time for Noah to enter into the ark. There was a time set aside for that particular purpose. There was a time for Israel to possess Canaan. Hallelujah. And when that time came, it mattered not about the giants or the wall seas. The seas, the purpose of God was here. To enter into the upper room in Jerusalem. Hallelujah. There was a time for that. There was a time to pray. Acts chapter 3. The Bible says that Peter and John went up to the temple at the time of prayer. The ninth hour, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It was set aside. It was purpose that at that hour they went to the temple and prayed. There was a time yeah. to preach the good word of the Lord. Yeah. There was a time and there was a time, a season yes. for what we would call revival. Yeah. What it actually was, was harvest. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Bible says in Acts 2 47. That it was the Lord that added to the church yes, daily is. such as should be saved. Right. There was a time for it. It was after the prayer. Yes. And it was after the preaching. Yes. There was a time, a season, a purpose yes. that was set aside. Yes. And in that time frame, praise God. Great yes. yes. things yes. happen. Praise mm. Amen. My Lord. Jesus. Purpose. A season set aside. A time for it. Right. And I'm preaching this morning. I think it's time. Yeah. We've all heard the old adage. You got to strike for the iron tight. Yeah. I've heard my folks say that years ago. Mm -hmm. I've heard some that kind of got a little bit confused. And said the Bible says you got to make hay while the sun shines. <laughs> Well, I've never found that in Scripture. <laughs> but I've heard that saying a whole lot. That's the truth. And we understand. I don't know where those originated from, but we understand. We've all heard them, been around for years, and we understand exactly what they mean, that we have to move when the time gets right. Yes. When the opportunity presents itself. Yes. The opportunity cannot be afforded to be lost. You could preach a while on that. You could talk about those 12 spies that went into Canaan. It was time. The iron was hot. The sun was shining. It was in the time frame of God. But they missed it. Yes. Ten of them did at least. The opportunity when it presents itself. It cannot afford to be lost. Our God's going to do great things in that time frame. Yes, in that season. He has a purpose and a will. And if you want to be a part of what he's going to do, you have to get with what he is doing. It's useless to ask God to bless what we're doing. What makes much more sense is that we will do what God is blessing. Hallelujah. All right. Thank God. God always, God always has moved in those time frames and seasons. And he has always had a way of letting his people know that now it's time to get out from under the mulberry trees. Right. There is a sound of going in the top of those trees. There is a sound of marching. Hallelujah. God spoke to David and said, stay right there until the time is right. Until a signal is given. He has always had the ability, and he always does. He lets his people know yes, he does. when he's about to do something. Amen. A lot of times it was when he's about to do a new thing. Like I've spoken 
and said, Shall, shall I do what I, until I hide what I do from my servant Abraham? He's faithful. He follows me. God was about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But he let the faithful know. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I didn't mean to. I actually had that written down. I didn't mean to. But I feel the Holy Ghost real strong right here. Praise God. He let the faithful know that he's about to do something. That judgment is about to fall. He let the faithful know I'm not going to tolerate this anymore. Hallelujah. He let them know that they have come to the end or they are nearing the end of the mercy of God. This kind of grace and mercy is about to be over. Pentecost did not stay in that upper room. At some point, I don't know exactly where that thought was at, but at some point they got out of that upper room. <coughs> they got down in the street. And they are still speaking with tongues, glorifying God. Those that heard them said, we hear them in our own language. And they are talking about the wonderful things of the Lord. Yes. Yeah. And they were staying in the upper room. And the multitude came together, Scripture says, when it was noised abroad. Something is happening here. Something is going on here. They never understood exactly, those people in the street, they never understood exactly what was taking place, but they knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that something was happening, and it was the Lord, hallelujah, that was doing this. Praise God. Something's taking place here. It is a new thing. There is a new season. There is a purpose here. Praise God. God's doing something he ain't never done before and he has got a way of letting the people know. Hallelujah. Yeah. Acts chapter 26 in that setting of scripture Paul is speaking to a group of the king also Festus the governor is there. Festus is the one that says that got <laughs> Undoubtedly, he's feeling conviction. And he finally can't take it anymore. And he says, Paul, much learning has made you mad. Yeah, you're crazy. Hallelujah. In that setting of scripture, Paul goes into much more detail about what happened in Acts chapter number 9. He actually goes into more detail about it in chapter number 26. When he is witnessing, he is talking to Agrippa the king and in, in his relating the story he talks about the light that he saw and the voice that he heard yes. he talks about the Lord speaking to him and saying that I have appeared unto you for a purpose There is a plan here. There is a will of God. And he said the purpose is this. To make you a minister. I'm going to call you out of the people. So I can send you back to the people. That's good. Hallelujah. That's good. Don't that make sense? Yes. <laughs> you can't help somebody when you've got the same problems that they've got. Amen. Right. You can't enlighten somebody when you're bound in the same darkness that they're in. Yes. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Somewhere you've got to 
be set free before you have the power to set other people free. Right, amen. He said, I have called you out from the people to send you back to the people, yeah. especially the Gentiles. I'm going to make you a minister that you would be able to open their eyes yes. that they could see what's going on yeah. in this season. Right. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. That they could understand what my, oh my Lord, oh, yeah. praise God. Yeah. Yeah. That they could understand what my purpose is. I want you to go to them. I'm going to bring them Hallelujah. out of darkness. I want them to see that marvelous light that you also have seen. I'm going to deliver them from the power of Satan. I'm going to remove them from the power of Satan. I'm going to bring them unto the power of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Could it be that what we are seeing in these days, could it be the beginning of a brand new season? Yes. Something is happening. Amen. And we all know something is happening. Yes. 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 Amen. This thing going on is worldwide. And we know that it is worldwide. Yes. Something is taking place in the country that we live in. The very foundation of this country is being severely assaulted every day. Not from a foreign government, but from our own Hallelujah. There is a concern. Praise God. Men's hearts saving them for fear of looking after those things that are coming up on the earth. Could it be that God's trying to get the attention of the faithful and set them to pray? sons that are here this morning that are only 14 and 17 have been in this for a long, long time. Yeah. They've been in it their whole lives. Yes. Most of us have been in this for a while. Yes. We're not newcomers. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't ever, I appreciate so much what Sister Lee said. We may be old, but we ain't through. Yes. Praise yes. God. Praise the Lord. Yes. Don't Amen. ever come to the thinking that that, that, that the glory days are past you. Oh, my Lord. What do you think all that experience is about that you've got? What about all those battles that you have fought? Yes. All those times right. that God has delivered you? Yes. Jamie quoted, so they make the way where there seemeth to be no way. What about all the times that you've been in that exact yes. situation? Yes. Could not understand or see where help was going to come from. You held on to the Lord. By and by, God came. Yeah. Yeah. His help came when the, when the time got right. Praise the Lord. Yeah. When the season presented itself. When the opportunity was there. And God moved and you were delivered. What do you think all that experience is about? Hallelujah. Not just so you can give a testimony, but that is a wonderful thing. And I'd like to hear those stories of, of how God has delivered, praise the Lord, and changed things and saved us and delivered us and, and, and set us free and cleansed us and filled us with the Spirit. I love to hear those testimonies. And we need to keep on testifying right. about the good things of God. That's much more than the testimony. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's something that God has allowed a season, a purpose to come into our lives. Since you said there's a Yeah. <laughs> 
uncertainty. Oh, God in heaven. Hallelujah. Could it be? <laughs> Hallelujah. We can live in any time frame. But we are here. Hallelujah. Could it be that we have come to the kingdom for such a time as this? That is a question. I'm going to follow up with another question. Are we up to the task? Are we going to possess Canaan or what? Are we going to possess Canaan? Are we going to retreat in fear from the giants and the walls? Are we going to possess it? Are we going to wander in the wilderness for the next 40 years? Until the generation that arises that will believe God and walk in faith. Praise God. I want to read, I want to read a, a part of a paragraph. This, this is not from Scripture. This is actually from a book that I've got. Somebody got me for my birthday or for Christmas or whatever. It's a very old book. I don't mean that the actual copy I have is is old. I'm, I just mean that the book itself is very old. It was written by a man named Charles Dickens. And the title of this book is A Tale of Two Cities. It is a historical novel meaning that it is a work of fiction, but the time frame that it's set in, the book was written in 1859, it was set in that time frame right before the French Revolution and historical novel, that time frame is real. And what happened in that time frame is real. 1859 was just, we're right, we're right before, it's the years right before the French Revolution took place that lasted for about 10 years, but anyway, A Tale of Two Cities. Very first paragraph <clears throat> will just absolutely grab your attention. But Dickens says, it was the best of times, but it was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epic of belief, Dickens says. But he says also it was the epic of incredulity or unbelief. It was the season of light. It was a season of darkness. It was a spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. We had everything before us. We had nothing before us. We were all going direct to heaven. We were all going direct the other way. Hallelujah. After 160 years, that paragraph so fits perfectly into where God has brought us to. We are exactly there. I know Dickens didn't write it for any prophetic purpose, but it fits perfectly. Yes. We live in better houses than we have ever lived in in our lives. And I'm saying this in a general, in general terms. 
I'm not saying it just to the congregation that sits here or anybody, any individual personally saying this in a gen in general terms. This society, this generation that we live in, we live in better houses than we have ever lived in in our lives. Anybody here beside me this morning remember those cold November mornings when you dreaded to throw back those six or eight quilts that was on your bed? Got to get ready to go to school. There ain't no heat in that bedroom where you sleep. My Lord in heaven help us. My, we had made when we got them electric blankets. But it didn't make it any easier getting out of bed. Grab your clothes and run to the stove. Hallelujah. Things have changed. We live in better houses than we have ever lived in in our lives. Oh, it is the best of times. But the families that occupy those houses are falling apart. It is the worst of times. We live in a time when there is more wealth among us than there ever has been before. Praise God. When I was in Africa, it was very apparent, and I already told me before I ever got there, that the Africans consider any American to be extremely wealthy. I thought it was some kind of a misconception until I got there and saw the poverty that they lived in. And then I realized that this idea they have that every American is extremely wealthy is exactly right compared to the standard by which these people are forced to live. That's right. We live in a time of greater wealth. Oh, it is the best of times. Praise God. Got more money than I ever had in my life. It's the best of times. But what about my bank account in heaven? Yes. What about my treasures yes. that supposedly are laid up yes. there? What does that look like? Most people are too interested in trying to accumulate wealth here to ever lay up treasure in heaven. It's the best of times. But spiritually, in a lot of situations, it is the worst of times. Yes. Knowledge. Now, the Bible says, the last days, people will run to and fro. Knowledge will increase. And we certainly live in that time. People know more now. In any time past, information is just easily attainable. Mm -hmm. People are knowledgeable. Now, I want, to, I want to put something in here. Having knowledge does not make you wise. Right. Right. Wisdom is something altogether different. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Right. You can go to the university and get some knowledge. You may have come out of there with not an ounce of wisdom. But you can get the knowledge. Yes. And we live in a time when there is greater knowledge. It's the best of times yes. as far as knowledge is concerned. But we don't understand the simple things yes. like how to love our neighbors, yeah. how to respect folks that might have a different opinion than what I've got. We don't understand those things. I'm talking in general, folks. You understand that, right? Praise the Lord. Amen. We don't understand just the, the, the simple things of what really is important. We don't understand 
true love compared to just plain lust. We don't understand that there's a difference there. We've got the knowledge, but we don't understand even the simple things. It's also the worst of times. Hell the events. Oh, they're beautiful outward, praise God. Millions are spent every year to make us beautiful outward. You don't like the way you look, honey. You can change that. Praise God. Hallelujah. But while much effort is putting into making us beautiful on the outside, very little is done about the ugliness that's on the inside. Yes. Right. My y'all all quiet. Praise God. Hallelujah. We are blessed. Oh, my. Yes. We are blessed. Amen. We are extremely blessed. We are blessed beyond measure. Hallelujah. But we're not thankful. It's the best of times. We're blessed. It's the worst of times. We are not thankful. Again, I'm speaking in general terms. Instead of being thankful, we have become entitled. And we think that we deserve what God has for us and even more. Yes. Amen. It's the best of times. It is the worst of times. Hallelujah. Millions likewise are spent on diet programs. I was at the doctor's office just the other day and they would take your blood pressure and weigh you and all that stuff. From the week that has been there before. Nurse told me, she said, well, you're down about four pounds. I said, well, I'm not surprised. And she said, why is that? I said, because I have absolutely zero appetite. I don't want anything. And then I told her, it just came out. I didn't, because after I said it, I thought she probably wouldn't even know what I'm talking about. But I told her, I said, I guess it'd be a good time to fast. <laughs> and she looked at me and she said, oh, have you ever done that? And I said, well, yeah. I have. Yes. I was so glad that she didn't go a step further and ask me how long it had been since I've done that. <laughs> we live in the best of times. We are full to overflowing. But it's also the worst of times. We are spiritually starved unto death. Yes. Amen. My, my. Amen. It's true. We live in a time when medical science has proclaimed to us that life and expectancy is a lot longer than what it used to be. Cause of the advancements in the medical field. Thank the Lord for it. I'm glad. Sure. It's the best of times. The medical community told us that most likely we're going to live longer than what some of our ancestors did. It's the best of times. And unless you're an unborn baby. Then it's the worst of times. Because you stand a good chance of being aborted before you ever see the light of day. Yes. Amen. We have beautiful buildings. Thank the Lord for them. We're not in those old brush arbors anymore. We're not in some of some kind of old storefront, not preached in those. That's burning up in the summer and you'll freeze to death in that place in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. Old storefront where the bathrooms that always freeze in the winter. It's just not a good situation. We're not in those things anymore. Thank God that we are not in there anymore. We have beautiful buildings. They're cool. They're heated. They, 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 look, they look good. But 
in these beautiful sanctuaries and auditoriums that we have, there is something that's missing that was there in those storefronts and those old fallen down buildings and old tar paper shacks. There's something in, in these beautiful edifices that we have come to in the 21st century. There's something that's missing. You rarely in these days, it's the best of times. Oh my. We got nice, nice churches to have church in. It's the best of times. But it also is the worst of times because there's something missing. Those groanings that cannot be uttered, that waved it out from under yes. the door of the prayer room. Amen. Intercessory prayer, prayer to stop, yes. is rarely heard yes. in some of these beautiful sanctuaries that the church possesses now. It's the best of times. Jesus. It's the worst of times. It's the spring of hope. It's the winner of our despair. Our preachers are better educated than what they have ever been. It's the best of times. Yeah. But too many of them are so infected with political correctness that they are afraid to preach what thus said the word yes, of the Lord. Amen. Amen. You're right. amen. They're scared of the congregations. They're scared of, of the society that they live in. So the message comes down to God's going to bless you tremendously and when he gets done with that he's going to bless you some more. Amen. Come on folks. Yes. Praise God. Oh, Come on. Come on. Amen. Come on, it's the best of times. Our preachers are educated. But it's the worst of times because too many of them never mention the consequences of sin. Right. Never. Right. They yeah. hear that message. It's the best of times. The signs of His coming are everywhere. Mm -hmm. It is an exciting time. Oh, thank you, Lord, that I'm here. Hallelujah. The signs are everywhere. It's the best of times. But unfortunately, to multitudes, He will come as a thief in the night, and it will be the worst of times. Right. Yes. That even in the church, those five foolish virgins were a part of the church. Yes. They are a type of it. And they had been so distracted by what was going on around them that the thing that was of the utmost importance, oil in their lamps had run out. That story is not in the scripture to point at somebody and say it happened to them, but it can't happen to us. It's not there for that reason. It is there to let us know and cause us to understand that if it happened to them and they lost and let their oil run out and it happened to them, it can happen to me. That's the reason it's there. Oh, it's the best of times. Thank you, Jesus, that I live in America. And I do. And that's not being sarcastic. I do. Thank the Lord. One nation under God says that on our money. <laughs> what place to put it? One nation under God. Praise the Lord. You know, it's kind of like Israel having Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. On their doorpost and out at their gate. That little sign was there in that scripture. Here is Israel. If I've got a dollar in my pocket, it says that we are one nation under God. Mm -hmm. In God we trust. Yes, yes. It's it's there. It's written on our on our money. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. It's the best of times. I'm so glad that I have been brought up and born in a country where there is freedom. Thank the Lord for it. It's the best of times. But it also is the worst of times. 
because this one nation under God has kicked God out of every right. public arena. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. so true. He is not welcome in schools. He's not welcome in our courts. He's not welcome in our government. We have kicked him totally out of every public arena. And there is a fight there is that's very much underway to now remove him from the private sector as well. That's going on right now. The battle lines have been drawn. They are very plain. They are easy to see. It's time for a fight. Yes. Solomon said that there is a time of peace and that there is a time of war. And those battle lines are drawn. It's time for a fight. A season of peace, but also a time of war. And what is so important in the church right now is that we are able to know the difference. Yes. How Two and ten? Are you kidding me? Two out of ten young people that have been brought up in the church? We only got two percent? Folks, that's intolerable. exactly what happened. Right. The power of God just came yes, down in this place. Just saturated the Amen. building and all of us. Yes. Yes. Everybody was well aware Amen. that God is doing something here. Praise God. Hallelujah. It was very, very apparent. The Lord has a way of letting his people yes. know when the time has come, yeah. and I think it's time. Yeah. How about you? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Now, yeah. what I have read for you is best of times, worst of times, and I, I'm just relating to some conditions. I think as far as the church is concerned that we have come to the best of times, that there is an opportunity, that there is an open door. Yes. Yeah. Praise the Lord that there is a seat. There is a, a purpose for this particular season that we have come to. Go back through Scripture. It was when things got tough that people began to turn to God. Right. It's when the famine came. That's when they turned back to God. Yes. It's when they were overrun by an enemy. That's when they began to pray yes. again and seek the face of God. It was not in times of prosperity, so to speak. It was when times got tough. Yes, yeah, then they turned to God. And those times are tough right now. Hallelujah. There's something going on. There's something that I think it's time. Praise the Lord. I want us to stand and pray.
Let's pray. Hallelujah. It's time. It's not, not just right now, but I mean right now included. It is time to pray. It is time to intercede. Hallelujah. It's time to weep between the porch and the altar. That's not bad times. That's not the worst of times. That is the best of times. Because we have promises that those prayers would be answered. We cannot tolerate. We can't tolerate our families being lost. We cannot tolerate them being bound in sin, chains of darkness. We can't tolerate that. The church comes to a place that it will not tolerate it. Then God will move. I believe that it is time. I think he is stirring the church. I'm quite convinced. That the Lord is stirring the church in this hour. That he is stirring it up. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's time that the church do something. My Lord, when the church goes to travail. It was after, it was when Zion travailed. That the church, Zion, brought forth her sons and her daughters. The children are born. It did not happen until the travail came. My Lord in heaven, somebody understand what I'm preaching right now. That we may have sometimes considered the travail to be the worst of times, but it proved to be the best of times because we went to our knees in prayer. We interceded. We sought God. We bombarded hell. Hallelujah. We appealed to heaven, and God heard, and God knew. Let's just come and pray. 